And a very good day to you and welcome to the program. We are standing in a huge pine plantation on a farm very near to where we live. It is a beautiful day and I really trust that today the Lord Jesus Christ is going to help you to refocus on the Lord. We're standing on a little country road here and I want to ask you a question. What road are you on at the moment? Are you on a road that leads to eternal life? Yes, it is very steep and it's rocky and it's slippery and it's hard, but it's leading to eternal life. Or are you on the broad road? It's a big tarmac road, six lanes, but people are jam-packed and they are going to the wrong place. I'm trusting that after this message, you will get back onto the right road, the road that leads to eternal life. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life, and no one goes to the Father but by me. John chapter 14 and verse 6. I want to speak to you today about a refuge. The Lord is our refuge. If you go to the gospel, the book of Psalm 46, and I'm reading from verse 1, and I love the Psalms. They are so encouraging. Verse 1, God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed. That's one statement, isn't it? And though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, the Lord is still our refuge and our strength. And then if you go straight to the New Testament, to the book of Romans chapter 8 and verse 31, you'll see that the Word of God says, if the Lord is for us, who can stand against us? Romans 8, 31. We have the majority. So if it's just you and Jesus, you have the majority. Isn't that good news? And Angus, how do we get that assurance? Well, by praying a simple prayer, which I'm going to pray for you, with you, at the end of this message. It's very important, folks. We need to know what road we are on, and we need to know who our refuge and who our strength is, especially in times of trouble. Now, I don't know where you're watching this program from, whether it is South Africa, Nigeria, the United States of America, Great Britain, Australasia. I don't know where you are, but I want to tell you there is trouble everywhere, everywhere. And we really need to know who our strength and who our refuge is. You see, if God is on our side, what do we need to be fearful about? Nothing. The devil, somebody used a wonderful illustration once of the devil. The devil is like a little mouse running around with a loudspeaker, frightening people to death with his lies, with his absolute malicious lies. That is why there are so many people in a state of depression, because the, 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 the devil is telling them lies and they are believing those lies. I want to say to you today, you need to focus on the Lord. He is our refuge and our strength. Now, I got hold of the Oxford Dictionary. I love that book. And I looked at the meaning of the word refuge. You see, folks, there's a lot of power in words. What you say is what you get. If you say, I think I'm, gonna, I'm sick and I'm going to die, folks, what you say is what happens. But if you say, by the grace of God, I'm trusting Jesus as my healer, you'll be surprised at the speedy recovery that you'll make. So a refuge, according to the Oxford Dictionary, is a place or state of safety from danger or trouble. What does that mean, a place or state? Well, some people are in a state of fear. Some people are in a state of absolute, that they're upside down. You don't know what to do. Do I leave? Do I stay? Do I get married? Don't I get married? Do I go into business? Don't I go into business? Do I enlarge my business? 
Do I con uh, consolidate? That is what a state is, a state of mind. What is your state today? Do I send my children to school or do I homeschool them? State. Do I sell or do I buy? That's what a state is. A place or state of safety from danger or trouble. Now, you know, this is what I love about following Jesus Christ. Since I've become a Christian, I've been able to be more level-headed. I'm a very impulsive person by nature at the best of times. And I've got myself into a lot of trouble by that. But when you become a follower of Jesus and you're not sure about something, you go to prayer and fasting and you go to the Word and you say, Lord, I'm not moving until you speak to me. Remember Gideon? He said, Lord, I don't know what to do, but I'm going to put a fleece out before you. Now, Lord, tomorrow I want this fleece to be soaked with water and all the ground round about must be dry. And it was. And he still wasn't happy. <laughs> I would have been more than happy. No, no. He said, Lord, tomorrow I want the fleece to be bone dry and the ground must be soaking wet. And it was. Now, you can also do that. You can put a fleece before the Lord. Not for everything, no. But you can say, Lord, I need to know. I want you to give me a sign. I want, to show me, I want you to show me a road that I can walk on that will lead to eternal life. And he will do it. He's done it for me. I've been a Christian now for over 40 years. And I want to tell you, there's no more of this thumb-sucking stuff. You know, which way is the wind blowing? You know, do we do it or don't we? No. You go to the Word and the Lord will confirm what He wants you to do. Not once, as many times as you like. And that is what's happened to me. It's become a lifestyle for me. And then people say, yo, you're so wise. No, I'm not wise. I'm just following the master. And I'm doing exactly what he's told me to do. You know, I was speaking to my producer just before this program. And he lives in Durban, in a big city in South Africa. And he was watching something on TV about sheep. Now, I used to breed sheep. I used to breed stud sheep. And he was telling me, <laughs> bless his heart, things that he thought I didn't know about. But I had sheep. He said, you know that I found out that if one sheep runs the wrong way, the whole flock follow. And that's a fact. If one sheep goes over a precipice, the whole flock will go over that precipice. That is a fact. I remember many years ago when I was at uh, Agricultural College in Scotland, we had a man there, maybe he's watching the program. His surname was Macmillan. And he stood about seven foot tall. He was a big Scotsman. And he came from the west coast of Scotland. Those high, craggy mountains. Very beautiful place, but very rugged and very dangerous. And every year when his flock of black-faced sheep, they black-faced sheep there, big, shaggy, white sheep with black faces, they would have to be brought down in the winter because they would come down to lamb in the bottom, right by the farmhouse in the paddocks. But to get them down from those mighty mountains, you had to know the way. Now, obviously, his father was getting a bit old. And so he got special permission. Only him, none of the rest of our students, none of us. He got permission to go home to bring the sheep down from the mountains so that they wouldn't injure themselves. And some of us today are running around like sheep who don't have a shepherd or a refuge. They don't have a place of safety from danger or from trouble. I want to say to you today, the good shepherd is waiting. He's calling you today. He says, I will guide you. I will direct you. I'll manage your finances. I will teach you how to be a a husband, a good wife, um, submissive children. I will teach you if you will adhere to my instructions. This is my agricultural manual. How many times have I told you that? This is the book that teaches me how to farm, how to live, how to be a good father. It's very simple. There's nothing difficult about it. And so today we need to be very careful that we don't make a mistake and go the wrong way. Now, a good practical example is the disciples. 
You know, the disciples had walked with the greatest shepherd who's ever lived. His name is Jesus Christ. For three years, night and day, they ate together. They traveled together. Everywhere Jesus went, they went. They saw the master walking on water. Folks, I've been to Israel. I've been to the Sea of Galilee. It's a lake, actually, a freshwater lake. It's 13 kilometers wide, and it's 21 kilometers long. Jesus walked on the top of the water, not knee deep. And it's a very, very deep lake, by the way, right across from the one side to the other. They saw him take two sardines and five barley loaves and feed 5,000 men, not including women and children. They saw him pray, and a dead man who had been dead for four days. You know, in the Middle East, it's so hot that when somebody dies, you have to bury him the same day because his body starts to disintegrate. Four days in the tomb and out he walked. They walked, they were on the Mount of Transfiguration, Peter, James, and John. They saw Jesus talking to his father with Elijah and Moses on either side. And yet when they were in the Garden of Gethsemane and the high priest soldiers came to arrest Jesus, what did they do? Well, if you look at, I'll give you the actual scripture and you can see for yourself. Matthew chapter 26 and verse 56. Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. They fled from a place or state of safety from danger or trouble. They fled from that place. The only person in the universe that could have saved them, they left him and they ran for their lives. What are you doing today? You see, if Christ is on your side, sir, it doesn't matter how many people are against you. You have the majority and you have the security and the victory. And that's what this message is about. It's about a refuge. Where is your refuge? Is your refuge in alcohol? Well, then you're on your way down. Is your refuge in pornography? It will not let go of you. You need deliverance from that thing. You can't just stop it. It is a disease. Is your refuge in drugs? What is your refuge? Is your refuge in your money? I want to tell you, your money can be worth nothing overnight. Remember the Wall Street crash when those tycoons were literally jumping out of the windows of their skyscrapers and committing suicide because overnight the currency of the, uh, the dollar just crashed and plummeted to nothing. Where is your refuge? Is your refuge in your family? It's wrong. You can't do that, madam. You cannot put your refuge in your husband. He's a human being. He's an ordinary man. He can't carry that kind of responsibility. It's got to be in God. It's got to be in Jesus. Jesus says, all ye that are weary and heavy laden, come unto me. He says, take up my cross. He says, my burden is light. You'll find that in Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 to 30. Words to that effect. The Lord wants to carry our burden. He wants to take the weight off the yoke. We'll still carry the yoke. Oh, yes, every one of us. But he'll in, in, ensure that we can get to the end of the road. Here's the road, remember? To the end. By the way, this road is on a slight incline. And it gets harder as it gets steeper. And as you get older, it doesn't get easier. No, it doesn't. <laughs> what do they say? Old age is not for sissies. I want to tell you, it gets harder. I remember as a young man in my probably early 30s, I said to an old gentleman who was a mentor, he mentored me. I said to him, Uncle Johannes, when you get older, does it get easier? Because I was a young father. I had five young children. I'd started farming and tears filled his eyes. And he said to me, Angus, it doesn't get easier. It gets harder. And I'm starting to understand exactly what he was saying. It's not easy. God never promised us it would be. So if you are in your garden of Gethsemane at the moment, and if you are sweating drops of blood, and you want to run for it, where are you going to run? You can't run from yourself. You see, the problem is within you. The problem is not out there. It's inside. So you say, I'm going to emigrate to another country. Your problems are going with you. 
What you need to do is you need to reconcile with Jesus. And I'm going to pray for you just in a short while. And then if you still need to go to that country, fantastic. You must go with God's blessing. But if God doesn't say anything, then you cannot move. Because you see, my worst enemy is not the devil. My worst enemy is Angus Buchan. And your worst enemy is yourself. So what you've got to do, you've got to come to Jesus with all of your problems, right? What does he say? Come unto me. And then we've got to leave him with the Lord and then we can walk this road because he is our strength and he is our refuge. You have got more potential inside of you than you even dreamed of. You know, John G. Lake, he was an American evangelist. He had a powerful healing ministry. He came to South Africa, to Johannesburg. And in five years, he started one of the biggest revivals that this country has ever seen. That's right. He was a man of great faith. And what he said, and I want to quote it for you, he said, when you get up in the morning, right, and you've had a shower and you're getting dressed and you're looking in the mirror, I'm talking to ladies and men, and you are combing your hair or brushing your hair, he says, you need to look into that mirror and you need, need to speak to that person in the mirror, which is yourself, of course. And you need to say, wherever that man, wherever this woman is going today, God is going with them. <laughs> and then get dressed, have a hearty breakfast and get out there. Because if the Lord is your refuge, if the Lord is your strength, you have nothing whatsoever to worry about. And even the fear of death. There are many people that are watching this program who have got a fear of dying. Well, when Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, you can say like Paul, the great apostle, for me to live is Christ and to die is but gain. Philippians chapter 1 and verse 21. So I want to say to you today, when you go to that mirror, you wash your face and you comb in your hair, you look in that mirror and you speak to yourself. That's right. You say to me, is that scriptural? Of course it is. That's what David said, my soul, what is wrong with you? Why are you so downcast? Talking to yourself. Because I tell you what, the problem is not outside. The problem is inside. When you are with Christ Jesus, you are in the majority. No one can hurt you. No one can harm you. Because if Christ is for you, who can stand against you? If we go to that same uh, Psalm, Psalm 46, if you look at verse 7, this is what it says. The Lord of hosts, the Lord of hosts is with us. The Lord of hosts is with us. And I want to be honest with you. Many times in my life, some of the darkest moments of my life, I have called out to Jesus and he has seen me through. Remember that old story about the footprints in the sand? We've all seen it. On the, on, the, on the seashore, and uh, this man is talking to the Lord, and he says, but Lord, you know, you've been walking with me. I see two sets of footprints in the sand. But Lord, one thing I don't understand, every time things got really hard for me and I couldn't take it anymore, you left me. And the Lord would say, why, why did you say that? Well, Lord, there was only one set of footprints in the sand. He says, yes, because those are the times I was carrying you on my shoulders. The Lord has promised us that he will never leave us and that he will never forsake us. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5. And I love verse 6 says, And the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? The worst thing you can do is to go your own way. That's right. And it's very easy, by the way, just to go with the flow, just to follow the flock of sheep all off the edge of the precipice and die. That's right, because it's much easier. But I want to tell you, it's much harder to stand. And when everybody says, come on, man, don't be a spoiled sport. Let's just go and do something that's ungodly, just for fun. And you do that, you're right off the road again. Yes, if you repent, if you say sorry, Jesus will forgive you. 
and he'll put you back on the right road. But don't go there. I want to say to young people watching this program, you know the business about sowing your wild oats. You know what that means? That means before I get married, I'm going to go and have a bit of fun. I'm going to go and sleep around a bit, and I'm going to try and experiment with different things. Don't do that. You know why? Because it will put a hole in your heart. That's right. God will forgive you. But the scar will remain, remain there for the rest of your life. I've got scars. There's things I did before I became a Christian that I'm not proud of. And I've asked Jesus to forgive me, and he has, and he's cleansed me. But I want to tell you something now. If I had to live my life again, young person, I would never, ever have done that. Because when you're not in the presence and you're not walking on the road which leads to eternal life, you're on the way to destruction over the edge of that precipice, just like those sheep that follow the one in the front. Don't do that. Jesus is the way. Now, I want to pray for you because I really feel that some of us have maybe strayed. You know, we're making a plan. You know, that's a favorite saying of all farmers. The farmer makes a plan. But my plans never worked. <laughs> Not one of them, I tell you what. They just cost me lots of money and lots of embarrassment. But when I started to do it Jesus' way, oh, it's a win-win situation. Father God, I want to thank you for my friends that are watching this program. Lord, many of them have got themselves into a, a cul-de-sac, a one-way road. Lord, I pray they'll have the courage to turn around and come back onto the road which leads to eternal life so that, Lord, they can make a way which leads to, to heaven, Lord. And, Lord, the time is so short. Please pray this prayer after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I am so sorry that I have neglected your word. And today, Lord, pray it. I ask you to show me the way. Holy Spirit, please give me the courage and the strength to follow after the Good Shepherd, Jesus Christ. I ask this in your precious name. Amen. Well, if you've prayed that prayer, now all you need to do is to get your compass out, here it is, and redirect and get on that road, this narrow road that reads, leads to eternal life, and your strength and your refuge and your best friend will get you there. So if you've prayed that prayer and you've got your compass, I want to tell you something else. You know, when I got saved, I was told, go and tell the first three people that you meet what you did. Well, I started off. It was very hard at the beginning, but by the end, I couldn't stop, and I've never stopped since. Don't be selfish. Don't keep the good news to yourself, but share it with a dying world. God bless you, and goodbye.